Welcome back to the channel. And once you know it, we got another Airstream here. We just can't keep them away. Uh, doing very similar to another one we did in Iowa. We're doing 700 watts on the roof. There's already a couple panels up there, but don't worry, we're gonna be taking those off. And uh, let's take a look at what we got going on. We're already hard at work on the inside. Let's see here. Normally there's two beds back here. We've taken off uh, this cabinet completely. And uh, what we're doing here is uh, two of the SOK 206 hour amp hour batteries are gonna go here. Multi-plus, geez, I can't even talk. Multi-plus uh, solar charger, tow vehicle charger, servo, all that stuff is gonna go right in here. And then we're gonna put this compartment back the way it was. Took out the uh, inverter there and the original solar charger. So we're getting that stuff all squared away. And uh, yeah, then we're gonna have some lines we gotta run through here. Should be able to get all the way over to here for the Servo GX display. And uh, this is something kind of excited about. It's, it's a small little touch, but we like to do the little things that keep people happy or to make people happy, just a little bit of joy. So uh, this comes with the Sun Explorer charge control panel here, but it's right below an outlet. So what we think we're gonna be able to do is replace this with a normal outlet that also has USBs, because as many of you know, you can never have too many USB chargers. And then, uh, yeah, and again, with a setup like we're doing, all the outlets are gonna work. You don't have to pick and choose which inverter or which outlets are inverter only. All of them are. Throw in your microwave, TV, everything. So it's gonna be a blast. Let's go inside the shop and see what JD is up to. That's right, we have JD back. Got some old man grunts those here. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Oh. We edited that out for time and and uh, YouTube monetization reasons. <laughs> so. JD uh, studied carefully the one we did in Iowa. Oh, yes. Watch that YouTube video a lot. Get those views up. <laughs> yeah. Actually, we're making some improvements here because we're only doing one solar charger. That other one had two chargers. So uh, we'll link that one in the description if you want to check that one out as well. But we're going to make this one a little bit more compact, I think, in the end, which is going to be helpful. A little bit. Yeah. Like, like we always say, everyone is our best one. I think. Uh, I think that each one, yeah, is our best. We, we always improve a little bit. We get a little bit better. So, if nothing else, it's better for that specific situation or for their rig. Sure, sure. Yeah, there's plenty of times where we do things a little bit different, and maybe we wouldn't do it that way all the time. But for their specific situation, it makes sense to do it that way, because ultimately, the customer has to live with it, not us. It's true. Uh, so actually we're getting towards the end of the day here, but, uh, we've got quite a bit done, I think. So I we're going to keep going at this and, uh, I will check in as things progress, maybe tomorrow sometime, maybe the next day. Actually, I, maybe we can get JD here for the final reveal, but oh. I think he's, uh, he's, he's I'm busy. Actually, neck deep in selling a house. Yeah. Actually, I was going to say, why don't you, can you take a minute and explain what you're up to? what we're up to as much as you feel that you can share sure, yeah so we're uh we're selling our house uh here in ham lake we're gonna be going without a place up here but we did get a seasonal campsite that's literally like three miles from our house on the exact same lake where we are uh so we're gonna be doing that in the summer where you don't have to mow the lawn or deal with stuff that breaks and all that so it's great and then back down to arizona for the winter time to do mm. all this fun stuff down there <laughs> yeah i would say that do we want to start uh, lining people up for that? Uh, we can start scheduling, yeah. It's going to be November at the earliest. Okay, so That's if you're watching this and you're thinking, boy, this would be great to do, but I live down south and maybe you want to get an excuse to oh, hang out at... The courtside area, it is fun. Good grief. Last winter was our first winter down there, and it was like... The big tent show, the, all the vendors. The, uh, you're making me jealous. Just everything. It is amazing. It is like a crazy, it's way different than I thought it was going to be, but way better, I would say. All right. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 
well, all right. Um, I don't know that I have much to add here, other than we're just gonna we're gonna keep working, keep keep uh, jamming some tunes, and yeah. get this thing done. Well, uh, JD's long since went home to hang out with his family. It's actually uh, getting close to eleven o'clock here at night. But the reason why I'm burning some almost midnight oil is it's finally cool. Uh, it's getting in the mid 80s and it's a little muggy here in Minnesota so I got a little fan going and uh, still hard at work here and this is where the board sits at the moment. Uh, one thing I wanted to draw some attention to is how we say everyone we do is the best one we've ever done and uh, one of the things that we've made some changes with is we're now also using not only we've been using this three by three raceway for a long time now we're also using some three by two raceway uh, and that fits right here real nice it is pretty tight in there i will say but uh, the little extra vertical room we get works much better than the old two by two raceway we used to get uh, both of this or both of these are from star tech i believe and uh, they've been working pretty well for us. And uh, so anyway, you can see kind of what we got going on here. I try and uh, what I call dry fitting or whatever, test fitting as much as I can. So we'll actually probably put the batteries over here because this is where they're gonna live in the system. And then I can pre-wire. So I try and do as much as I can outside of the RV, uh, in this case, an Airstream, that I possibly can. It's so much in, so uh, I actually have the AC mains right here. I already have the AC mains connected. So I even do all the programming here. Just it's much easier to be standing here doing it rather than hunched over in an awkward position in there. And I feel like that leads to doing a better job. Uh, you get tighter connections, better connections here, especially these stupid push in connectors. I wish these are screwed down. Victron, why are you doing this? I've seen a number of failed connections of these online where they don't grab properly. Uh, so anyway, it's really important that we get these right. And I feel like I can do these the best that way. Uh, so yeah, uh, I got some other tips here. I haven't done it yet. Uh, one of which is to put a little bit of super glue or not super glue, sorry, hot glue on the VE direct connectors like right here as well. We haven't done it yet, but I will be doing that now. The reason why I do that is just, they can jostle loose sometimes and hot glue is a common way just to secure a connector like that uh, so that that does not come out accidentally. So that's about all I got for now. I think I'm about ready to hit the hay and I'll be up with the sun tomorrow. And uh, let's see if I can match this shot up for tomorrow morning. We'll see you then. Ah, well, good morning. Actually, it's the afternoon right now, but we made it. And uh, maybe it doesn't look like a whole lot more happened here, but it's a lot of tedious stuff and it's been hot and miserable. So we're going to get this in the Airstream here shortly, but not before we explain a little bit what's going on. Uh, so we got all our connections made here. Got the uh, little bit of hot glue here. Got to dust all this off, make it look nice and clean. Uh, actually, I can put the cover on that now, can't I? Um, I'm thinking, I'm still on the fence if I'm gonna do raceway here. I think I am. Let's, let's clean it up a little bit. I'm not gonna do raceway just for that little thing right there. That'll be fine, just secured down. Uh, we do have the external heaters installed and well, external heater. This is an RV tank heater that we put in between these SOK batteries. And I've got a uh, little switch here that it's going to be operated by. You can turn it on and off by that. There is a thermostat built into it, of course. You got that all wrapped in cable wrap here, along with the uh, battery temp sensor. What else we got going on? So yeah, big picture here. What I try and do is lay this out as if it were inside for as much as possible so I don't have to be in there doing the work. I could be here, standing up like a normal human being. But I think we're getting close to where we're gonna have to install this for real. The last thing I need to do is build a little platform for all these cables to run underneath these batteries. Um, 
You know, maybe I'll talk a little bit later why I like the external battery heater option more than the internal battery heater option. Uh, status update, uh, day three, it is daylight out. Uh, mid eighties again, hot and humid, just like we like it in Minnesota, I guess. Uh, this is where we're at. Um, got the batteries installed, got the tank heater in between them and uh, all clamped down. Got our main fuse in there. Uh, we got a lot of cleanup to do here, of course. Uh, we got the servo display mounted here. Uh, we ended up having to do that there because, let me show you where we normally would do it. In this flying cloud, there's not that little pocket here. This is a 2020 model. Uh, in another one we did, there was a little cubby here where we could snake some wires up through here. Now, we could have done a surface mount right here and then had some cables coming. Um, oh, I haven't put this back yet. I was doing some exploring in there to see what we had for options to get a cable around in there. In there. We would have actually got had to go in behind the fridge. And uh, anyway, we're talking with the customer. We opted to do this right here, so that's going to be just fine. And that's a big part of everything we do is we, anytime we hit a snag or a, a spot that needs a decision, we let you know. We include you. So, uh, here's some other kind of cool stuff. Here's the switch for the tank heaters. So, that's currently on right now, I guess. We could, they're not heating because there's a thermostat in that heating pad. Now's a good time as any to talk about why I like external battery heating over in battery heating and i'll tell you why right now when you do internal heating the power that is used to do that heating all happens inside the battery our shunt which is in here somewhere has no idea about it that means your victron system there the battery could say 100 percent forever but your batteries be dead or 30 percent or 50 percent or whatever because they've been trying to keep themselves warm and maybe you forgot to turn them off these uh, SOK batteries, you can turn them off. Um, but even if you're, you know, and you're camping in the fall or early spring, and and uh, you're using the internal heating function, well, you're gonna be losing capacity. You're not gonna know about. So, and if there's a problem with it, well, it's internal to the battery. If there's a problem with this, uh, you know, if the fuse pops on this, well, you replace the fuse. If uh, something goes on with the, with the tank heater, battery heater, you replace that, not a big deal. So, not to poo-poo uh, internal heating, I love it, I love the idea of it, I just wish there was a way to capture the energy that's used, a and with everything else as well. I, the thing I like about these SOK batteries, again, they got screws uh, on here. You can actually service these, so, of an internal tank heating, sorry, internal battery heating battery. <laughs> SOKs are my favorite. SOKs are quickly becoming our favorite for everything, really. Uh, okay, so over here then, here's what we got going on. Uh, this isn't secured yet, but we do have, oh, what do we got there? We got a thermostat controlled fan going, and let me tell you, that does feel good right now. That's uh, sucking air out. We just mounted that to this grill here because this compartment will generate some heat. And then we're gonna have to put a hole in here so it can shoot the air out that way. And then from here, I believe it can get back out, but there's only so much we can do. We're just trying to help. If it gets real hot and you're really working this system, you gotta open that up. If it's cold, you don't gotta worry about it because it'll help warm your rig. Uh, then also what's going on in here, we made our solar connection. Here's the solar uh, negative, solar positive. I gotta apply some heat to these to get them to shrink down. Then I'm about to make my DC main connection and I'm gonna be using these uh, butt splice lugs because what I'm doing is I just take the old inverter positive and negative and I will splice off of that and I ran these um, these lines over here for that and uh, then the entire system will be connected and I find that a pretty good way to do it that it it uses the existing circuit protection all that stuff so you know we're we're fused on this side 
and then we're breakered on this side so I really like that I gotta get back at it so in this particular one the uh, the converter is over on the other side of where, all, where we're running everything so that's not gonna be a problem we're just gonna make our main AC connections oh we're almost gonna lose it here we're gonna make our main AC connections right here at the plug so you get that, that's the two places you can do it either at the plug or at the converter so in this case we're doing the plug uh, however this is actually probably we're solving a problem here a little bit there is this is all the wire I have to work with uh, if I pull I can get a little bit more it's nice when you got enough to come at least out to here so we'll uh, splice that together but first I, I have a hard time ever keeping these straight so what I do first is I'll separate these splay them out <clears throat> turn on the inverter and then I'll see which one is outputting and that's my output uh, connect that one to this one to th this set of wires here with the splices and then uh, connect the the plug here oh it's on the ground the plug there to the other one easy peasy all right got the uh, all the splices set up here and uh, I always pull test on them all don't want them going anywhere they got to go nowhere and then uh, I got the heat shrink tube ready to go slide that over there give it some heat and uh, then pinch them together because on the wires here it doesn't always uh, go together but then uh, then I should be able to tuck that whole unit back in there and then connect the rest up and then uh, test everything Whew, it's already getting hot last day just got the solar panels put down we ended up only being able to do 600 and the reason is that fridge vent over there uh, there's a fridge vent that's pr preventing us from putting uh, well basically what we would do is um, yeah the 600 that we have and then 250 is to get to 700 but to tell you the truth I've also got some half ideas that if a customer was willing we could probably fit some 200 watt panels up here maybe two on the back and that gives you 400 right there we might be able to squeeze 800 or so on here but you get a little bit more overhang on the bottom let's go uh or none of the bottom. yeah from looking from the bottom let's go down and take a look and see what i'm talking about so from the bottom here this is kind of what you end up seeing and if you weren't my if you didn't mind the panels hanging over to where that drip rail is up there you could get 200 watt panels on there but uh yeah hey it's uh i don't know we're getting close to full sun here let's see what we're getting for watts into the battery still uh still pretty early in the day but i'll take that oh now it's, now we're going into shade all right uh we're in the uh, electrical bay of the airstream here in the front corner and we're just wrapping up the last couple of things and one of them was the trailer charging and the way i do that is i just use a 10 gauge wire um just a solar wire basically and then i put two red uh pieces of tape on it so i know what it is and then uh if you follow so this is the wire loom here that comes from the trailer hitch or the yeah the seven pin and you follow the white and the black right so those both come in here white goes across here to the na main negative bus bar black typically has this little jumper wire and it goes from here to here but instead we skip that and because uh, we don't want it part of the main system we want to charge it separately using this guy here the orion the input wire comes from this all the way down there and into here and that's how we make that connection so we're down here at the uh, front of the airstream working on this battery box now we have to remove these batteries however we still need to maintain the uh, the leveling jack power and uh, i think there's a couple other things that need power so we're gonna go, go ahead and get started on that first thing you want to do when you're doing it is uh well disconnect everything and uh Bear in mind that a lot of it will still be live if you're working with a system that's live. So actually come to think of it, I think I'm gonna turn off the power 
on on this system and hey i'll show you how you do that if you're curious on that on the systems we do uh typically what you need to do is you need to turn the main power off but oh that actually turned it on it was in the middle position okay we're off but that actually is going to kill everything because we still got solar so you got to go here now everything went dead now uh, these are still going to be live but once we disconnect them from these batteries they won't be these lines won't be live so that's pretty much what we need to do i would just say step one disconnect everything in this box remove the batteries and uh we'll come back got those out in real time i would say that was about five minutes for me what we got to do next yeah we can close that is these guys here we got to turn these into something that can can connect to the other cables because we got to connect them together that's the goal this the battery used to be connected to this and the inverter used to be connected to this but we used the inverter lines as the new main dc lines from our uh coming from the links in there so we got to connect these to that so what i like to do is just put two uh two gauge lungs i think that's what those are well we'll see i got a couple different lug sizes put a lug on there on either of them and then connect them with a bolt and put some heat shrink tubing over them and then the other thing you can do is just add on all the other connections that are in there onto those lugs and it should all fit underneath the heat shrink tubing. And then everything still works as if the batteries were here. And as I like to say, we have not burned any mechanical bridges. The, the idea being, let's not remove anything more than we need to. Let's not make this more of a custom thing than it needs to be. Because if Airstream proper wants to work on it, I'd like to give them as much information as possible through things that they are already familiar with. So... And if you ever wanted to undo something, you could, because maybe you might. Maybe you need to back out of somewhere. Maybe I've had to do that myself. Who knows? All right, so I'm going to get on that. I'm going to put some lugs on the other side. All right. If you're following along, I hope uh, hope yours looks something like this. Got uh, heat shrink tubing already on there. That is key. If you don't do that, it's really hard to get it on there after at least not without taking it all apart. So um, you can see here, just got those nutted together. Got Make sure to have a lock washer on there, that's critical. But as long as all the copper parts are touching each other, and I would recommend making sure your main lugs are touching each other and then put all the other things uh, on, the, on one side or the other of it. Don't put the little things in between. That's gonna reduce connectivity for the main loads. Uh, but in a rig like this, there's probably not a lot of main loads. The, the biggest one was the inverter, and now we're running four rod cable from giant batteries to that. So I'm going to slide those on there, heat shrink them up, and then we can turn the system back on so it can continue charging. Ah, uh, okay, here we are back in the uh, main bedroom. Everything is put back together. Uh, I'm getting tired of sweating. Ah. <laughs> uh, so we got uh, the display here, of course. That's all looking good. Uh, still got a ways to get that battery actually 100% charged. But uh, the main reason why I'm shooting this little segment here is take a look at these mattresses. Now, the customers actually stopped over uh, to check in. Well, not exactly. Uh, they just stopped by to say hi. And uh, we got to talking about these mattresses a little bit. And as you'll notice, that is not a standard RV mattress. And there's no standard RV mattress with the springs and all this. Like this is a legit real mattress that has that curve there. Well, it turns out there's a company in Minneapolis area and I don't know if it is in other states or not. I don't pay attention all that much to mattresses, but it's called the Original Mattress Factory. And they brought them a template and they made this mattress with that curve right in it. So if that's something you're interested in, I guess that's a thing. Huh. The more you know. Let's go outside and take a look at the finished product out there. Oh, also, uh, this is how this turned out. I was stealing some power here. I verified it all works. I think that looks pretty good, huh? Check that out in there, huh? 
that's a work of art in my humble opinion got the shut off shut off heater switch i should label that yeah got the fan going in there doesn't even feel all that warm oh jeez. well i think that'll about do it for this one from all of us here at soda solar myself sean jd uh my wife jen she helps out uh keeping us legal as i like to say so and uh all of you in the comments down below keeping us safe and uh encouraging us to continue to do this because it's uh it's kind of crazy to pretty much dump your whole life into putting solar and batteries in rvs but so far i'm too stubborn to try anything different i love it so if uh, you want <laughs> If you want me to continue to throw my life away on your rig, contact us at sodasolar.com. Thank you.